Today, we have an update on the 7000 X3D chips burning. NVIDIA is panicking right now. AMD officially launched two new APUs and AMD's next GPUs pricing and performance leak. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, I have an update on the story I recently did regarding Ryzen 7000 X3D chips essentially burning up. Starting things off, we have an update from Anantech, who shared a statement from AMD that says, quote, We are aware of a limited number of reports online claiming that excess voltage while overclocking may have damaged the motherboard socket and pin pads. We are actively investigating the situation and are working with our ODM partners to ensure voltage is applied to Ryzen 7000 X3D CPUs via motherboard BIOS settings are within product specifications. Anyone whose CPU may have been impacted by this issue should contact AMD customer support. So yeah, these BIOS updates I discussed are because of that. ASUS also made a statement via new video by Der Bauer where they mentioned the new BIOS updates have some dedicated monitoring to help protect the boards and CPUs. They also mentioned defining new rules for AMD Expo and SOC voltages. Updates with these will be issued soon. Remember that Expo memory is a essentially AMD's version of XMP profiles for overclocking memory. One interesting fact is that according to Der Bauer, the one thing in common between all of these cases is the use of Expo memory. A user actually gave a decent theory that Expo memory profiles allow voltages to increase by quite a bit, but X3D parts are very sensitive to higher voltages, and I'm pretty sure this is what AMD means when they say while overclocking. Expo memory is technically overclocking, and it actually voids your warranty, which is a bit annoying, but regardless, there is a very real issue that's causing AMD's new X3D parts to fry, so if you own one, make sure you update your BIOS, and at least for now, I suggest turning AMD's Expo off. Either way, this obviously doesn't look good for AMD, but it at least sounds like they're going to be replacing damaged parts, so please contact them if something goes wrong. But first, I've got a fun little puzzle for you to solve. Let's pretend that you're in the Middle Ages, and you're a part of a kingdom where you're in charge of the coins. One day, your queen requests four coins, but the night before, a thief comes in and leaves a note. It essentially says that one of the coins could be fake. All you have is a scale and one coin that you know is real for reference. So the question is, how many times do you need to use the scale to find whether a coin was taken or not? Let me know down in the comments below. The counterfeit coin is a great way to learn new skills, the kind you can develop with today's sponsor. Brilliant! The learning platform that teaches you the right way by getting you to do it yourself with fun, interactive puzzles like this. And because they were built to teach STEM, they have tons of courses on computer science, where you can learn like this, not just boring lectures or memorizing a bunch of formulas. It's where I go when I want to learn something new. If you're still stumped on the problem, visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld for a 30-day free trial. And when you visit that link, you'll get 20% off the annual premium. Next up for today, it looks like things are not going well over at Team Green. Not long ago, I went over the fact that Nvidia's newest RTX 4070 is already dropping below MSRP in certain regions of the world. We've also heard that Nvidia is reportedly planning a partner rebate of $50 sometime soon, and that they're apparently limiting production of the card. Today we have a new story that the 4070 is dropping below the launch price in Europe. More specifically, the card has seen a 60 euro price drop in Germany. Not only that, but a new report from my drivers claims that the 4060 Ti is set to launch at 2800 yuan, which is around $400. And Red Gaming Tech has also heard from his sources that the card could go on sale for $399 instead of the earlier leak price of $450. Basically, Nvidia seems to be panicking right now over the low sales of their RTX 4070. Let's not forget that the card has been widely available since the initial launch of the GPU. Basically, things have certainly changed from 2022 and 2021. One. Next up, AMD has officially launched two new APUs, the Ryzen Z1 and Ryzen Z1 Extreme. Of course, if you followed the channel, you already knew that these APUs existed thanks to a couple leaks. So if you like to know about PC hardware before they're announced, make sure you subscribe to GamerMeld. Either way, these new APUs are apparently not just made for the ROG Ally, they're actually made for handheld gaming PCs in general. So the market for portable gaming devices is clearly getting pretty big. When it comes to specs, the 
the Z1 non-extreme variant comes with a 6-core, 12-thread Zen 4 CPU with 4 RDNA 3 CUs and 22 megabytes of total cache. The Z1 Extreme, on the other hand, comes with an 8-core, 16-thread Zen 4 CPU, a very nice 12 RDNA 3 CUs, and 24 megabytes of total cache. When it comes to performance, AMD shared multiple benchmarks using the ROG Ally, and as you can see, at 1080p native, both CPUs do fairly well, though the Z1 Extreme is much faster. With that said, using AMD's Radeon Super Resolution upscaling, both do much better, with the Z1 Extreme staying at at least 59 FPS and getting much higher. Now, 1080p may not sound like much, but remember that these are made for portable devices, so even lower than 1080p is fine. The Steam Deck has a 1200 by 800 resolution screen. One issue could boil down to battery life, as AMD claims these benchmarks were run on turbo mode, which draws up to 30 watts. The Steam Deck, on the other hand, runs much lower than that. At the end of the day, these are some very interesting APUs. And lastly for today, we have our first glimpse of performance as well as price for AMD's next GPU. The story originally comes from Moore's Law is Dead and later reported by Tech Power Up. And according to the report, an early sample of Navi 33, which should be AMD's RX 7600, has been tested. Remember that the 7600 is expected to be announced at Computex, and it's apparently set to be around 11% faster than the 6650 XT while consuming 175 watts. Now, that obviously isn't all that impressive. While the 6650 XT does consume a bit more than that, it's not much faster than the 6600 XT, so an 11% boost over that isn't all that great. Of course, this is an early engineering sample, so it could get a bit faster, but according to this, it also keeps the same 8GB of VRAM as the 6600 XT, so there really isn't much to write home about, except potentially price. In the recent video I discussed from Red Gaming Tech, he also goes over pricing that he heard from one of his sources. Though given it isn't confirmed, obviously take this with a grain of salt. But either way, according to him, Navi 33 was expected to be around $329 to $350, but AMD is now looking at launching at $300 or potentially even lower. Basically, NVIDIA isn't the only one having issues with the current market. And while the 7600 doesn't look to be all that fast, its pricing could very much help. Fingers crossed. So while that does it for today, what do you think about AMD's next GPU? Are you impressed or are you more excited for their new APUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermel. And as always, have a great day!